Hello, my YouTube family. Hope everybody is blessed and being a blessing to someone else. Happy Father's Day to all the wonderful fathers out there. This is a story from Chicken Soup that I chose, and it is from Jack Can't Feel Himself. It's called Remember We're Raising Children, Not Flowers. It says, David, my next door neighbor, has two young kids, ages five and seven. One day he was teaching his seven-year-old son, Kelly, how to push the gas-powered lawnmower across the, around the yard. As he was teaching him how to turn the mower around at the end of the lawn, his wife, Jan, called to him to ask the question. As David turned to answer the question, Kelly pushed the lawnmower right through the flower bed at the edge of the lawn, leaving a two-foot wide pad leveled to the ground. When David turned back around and saw what had happened, he began to lose control. David had put a lot of time and effort into making these, those flower beds the envy of the neighborhood. As he began to raise his voice to his son, Jan walked quietly over to him, put her hand on, her, on his shoulder and said, David, please remember, we're raising children, not flowers. Jan reminded me how important it is as a parent to remember our priorities. Kids and their self-esteem are more important than any physical object they might break or destroy. The window pane shattered by a baseball, a lamp knocked over by a careless child, or a plate dropped in the kitchen are already broken. The flowers are already dead. I must remember not to add to the destruction by breaking a child's spirit and deadening their sense of liveliness. I was buying a sports car coat a few weeks ago, and Mark Michaels, the owner of the store, and I were discussing parenting. He told me that while he and his wife and seven-year-old daughter were out for dinner, his daughter knocked over her water glass. After the water was cleaned up without any recriminating remarks from her parents, she looked up and said, you know, I really want to thank you guys for not being like other parents. Most of my friends' parents would have yelled at them and given them a lecture about paying more attention. Thanks for not doing that. Once when I was having dinner with some friends, a similar incident happened. Their five-year-old son knocked over a glass of milk at the dinner table. When they immediately started in on him, I intentionally knocked my glass over too. <laughs> when I started to explain how I still knock things over even at the age of 48, the boy started to beam and the parents seemingly got the message and backed off. How easy it is to forget that we are all still learning. I recently heard a story from Stephen Glenn about a famous research scientist who had made several very important medical breakthroughs. He was being interviewed by a newspaper reporter who asked him why he thought he was able to be so much more creative than the average person. What set him so apart from others? He responded that, in his opinion, it all came from experience, from experience with his mother that, that occurred when he was two years old. He had been trying to remove a bottle of milk from the refrigerator when he lost his grip on a slippery bottle and it fell, spilling its contents all over the kitchen floor. A veritable sea of milk. When his mother came into the kitchen, instead of yelling at him, giving him a lecture or punishing him, she said, Robert, what a great and wonderful mess you have made. I have rarely seen such a huge puddle of milk. Well, the damage had already been done. Would you like to get down and play in the milk for a few minutes before we clean it up? Indeed, he did. After a few minutes, his mother said, you know, Robert, Whenever you make a mess like this, eventually you would have to clean it up and restore everything to its proper order. So how would you like to do that? 
We could use a sponge, a towel, or a mop. Which do you prefer? He chose a sponge, and together they cleaned up the spilled milk. His mother then said, you know what? We have here is a failed experiment in how to effectively carry a big milk bottle with two tiny hands. Let's go out in the backyard and fill the bottle with water and see if you can discover a way to carry it without dropping it. The little boy learned that if he, if he grabs the bottle at the top and then the lip with both hands, he could carry it without dropping it. What a wonderful lesson. This renowned scientist then remarked that it was at that moment that he knew he didn't need to be afraid to make mistakes. Instead, he learned that mistakes were just opportunities for learning something new. Which is, after all, what scientific experience are all about. Even if the experiment doesn't work, we usually learn something valuable from it. Wouldn't it be great if all parents would respond the way Robert's mother responded to him? One last story that illustrates the application of this attitude in an adult content was told by Paul Harvey on the radio several years back. A young woman was driving home from work when she snagged her fender on a bumper of another car. She was in tears as she explained that it was a new car only a few days from the showroom. How was she ever going to explain the damaged car to her husband? The driver of the other car was sympathetic, but explained that they must note each other's license numbers and registration numbers. As a young woman reached into a large brown envelope to retrieve the documents, a piece of paper fell out. In a, in a heavy masculine scrawl, those were these words. In case of accident, remember, honey, it's you I love and not the car. Ain't that good, funny? It says, let's remember that our children's spirits are more important than any material things. When we do self-esteem and love, love blossom and grow more beautifully than any bed of flowers could. And this is by Jack Canfield. Isn't those wonderful stories of how show, how it just shows that we have to have more patience with our children, our grandchildren, nieces and nephews when they're little? Because we all make mistakes. And so it just I just learned out of that to not be so hard. And sometimes we got to overlook those mistakes and, and help them doing those mistakes and applaud them, you know, even when they made a mistake and let them know that we're human too. I really like the one when the little boy uh, dropped his milk and the, the man dropped his milk, too, and turned it over on the table. That was really good because, hey, you know, children are not perfect and adults are not either. So this was a good story time by Jack Canfield. This is from Chicken Soup for the Soul. It's not sponsored or anything, y'all. I just do it because I love chicken soup. It's so many stories in there that y'all can read. And hopefully y'all will have some chicken soups in your home. And don't just let them collect dust. But pick them up and read them because you'll get some good stories and insights in there. And um, you'll laugh too, okay, and have a good time. So, y'all, thank you for joining to the story. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. I hope you got something out of this story. If you read, read, listen to it today, God bless you and have a wonderful, blessed day. And know that I love you, but above all, who? Jesus loves you more. Talk to you next time. <laughs>